Hello everyone and welcome back to our third weekly video regarding individuals and societies in the field of geography uh, when it comes to technology, resources, and innovative tools in the 21st century. Now, accordingly, whenever we talk about the field of geography, we think about the five themes of geography. So we're going to understand and describe the precise location of places on Earth, and we're going to use coordinate addresses and other methods to pinpoint certain locations. And last, we're going to recognize the significance of location in determining the characteristics and attributes of a certain place. As we move on, we're going to have um, two different types of locations we're going to differentiate. So first of all, we have absolute and relative. So absolute location represents a specific continuous coordinates of a place on Earth, typically denoted by latitude and longitude, like the precise GPS data that we have um, for a certain city. However, in contrast, the relative location characterizes a place position concerning neighboring landmarks or geographical features, offering even insight into its surroundings and even how it fits in the broader context, geographical context, such as, such as the proximity uh, to a river or its situation between two different major basically cities. And as we go on to the themes of geography, we're going to um, have a basically a written task regarding basically providing a list of locations or clues that has to do with the site themes that we talked about, location, place, human environment, interaction, movement, and region. So Again, as you can see, each one's going to do it individual, and then we're going to, um, you know, team up together in order for us to uh, understand it's just a different, basically, um, task for the themes themselves. And as we move on, we're going to be introduced to physical geography, as we're going to recognize and explain Earth's natural features, understand weather, climate zones, and climate change, and we're going to be introduced to various other concepts vocabulary like for example the uh, ecological interactions so we're going to answer again a lot of challenging questions that are how does the study of physical geography contribute to our understanding of the natural world and its impact on human societies and the environment and then i'm going to provide you with a task in which you'll be uh, basically provided with certain information of resources about each atmospheric layer and then we're going basically to learn about characteristics and pictures and functions of these layers so again we're going to uh, try our best to embed um, the context of atmosphere um, and the concept of atmosphere itself in context into basically um, into the concept of physical geography. And again, last year we're going to link um, the Earth atmosphere with climate change, planet change, weather patterns, and the contribution to basically certain primary gases. And on to um, hydrosphere and geography. So we're going to explore the impact of human geography on societies, analyze the impact of studying phenomena, availability on human activities, and what is basically in hi the hydrosphere and how does it actually fit into the Earth's overall system. So we're going to create a poster again. We're going to clarify more the definition of hydro sphere three major characteristics about the field itself in regard to its significance to the field of geography and then we're going to uh, write lastly three various examples of the field itself coupled with a visual representation so you can be very creative when it comes to creating that poster again in which you highlight the three major characteristics and now we're going to move on with the other type of um, that we have of geography, which is human geography. And I'm going to answer a lot of challenging questions that are, what is human geography and how does it actually differ from physical geography? What are the environmental challenges associated with human geography? And it comes to pollution and land use changes. What are the implications of globalization on human geography, including the movement of goods and then information and people across borders? As we're going again to answer what does a G the GIS stand for? Again, this is a, a type of tool, innovative tool that is actually used, and we're going to talk about its purpose, and uh, we're going to talk about the function itself. So um, can't wait to see you guys. Don't forget to, again, move on to and prepare for the other concept that we have, which is human geography. Um, see you in our next class.